Okay, I just want to go through a few things for um, mission four. Uh, mission four, we're looking at um, three interactives again. There's a video, same, same format. It's like repeat, repeat, but lots of different organisms. So the first one is dealing with um, five birds. And I will give you a little uh, hint or tip on this one um, that the there is a bird that is um, uh, how do they describe it uh, outgroup an outgroup and that's the common rose finch. So recall that that is the one that goes to the far right. It's got its own line. There's nothing connected to it. Has a common ancestor, but there's nothing connected to it. So this one is about birds and their beaks. And this is Charles Darwin did a ton of work when he went to the Galapagos Islands and he studied birds. Uh, was one of the big um, uh, um, pieces of evidence he gathered for the um, natural theory of evolution and natural selection. So the most difficult part about this is writing the words down. And I can't say them, so I'm not even going to try, but this is pretty word. Um, I want you to think to write down that their beak shape. And actually, I actually sketched pictures of the, of the beak. I was like Charles Darwin and um, making these little sketches of their beak. But I want you to observe or write down the shape of the beak and what it's used for. So cur curved upper part of its bill is twice as long as the lower part. So it's a tool for extracting nectar from flowers and larva from trees. And I actually sketched a quick picture of this bird's beak. Okay, this is all on the Hawaiian islands. Then this is the outgroup, which is the rose finch. I actually did uh, end up sketching a picture of its uh, beak. Um, but this isn't so important because this common rose finch is an outgroup. So you really are not going to compare physical characteristics or beak characteristics to other birds. So you don't have to worry about that, but the rest you do. So then they talk about um, iwi, if I've said it right. And it's got a sickle shape in its beak. And again, I sketched a, a quick picture of it. Um, the top and bottom beak are more similar in length. And it's adapted for drinking nectar. Um, and this is actually from a specific type of flower. Now, you don't need to know the type of flower, but I just said a specific flower. So it's very, very specific. And this bird has adapted really well to feeding from that flower. But what would happen if that flower was gone? So having uh, a limited food supply that you can actually extract can be a negative. But then the, the benefit is that that organism becomes super specialized. It's really, really good at, at doing that. Um, then we have a, another type of bird, and um, it has used their short curved beaks to suck nectar from trees. So this is a shorter beak. And then they have another bird, and they talk about um, this one has uh, no, I don't think this one, everything from insects to seeds, its beak is, isn't specialized. I was going to say it's no specialization. So it's not specialized because it eats everything. So then we're going to copy this chart down because this is dealing with the DNA part, and which you um, are learning about or have learned about. And I, again, just very quickly, I don't copy down all of these blank spots. spots. I just do position one, position two, position four, and position 16. That's what I do when I make my list. So then we go back and we start adding our um, uh, birds. And I know that the common rose finch is going to be that outgroup, so it's going to be on the far right-hand side. And I'll just have to pull up my, um, my data here to, or my table to get some comparison. This one wasn't too bad to put together, um, but we had... Um, Let me see. Oh, I've got the wrong one here. We had the this bird and this one and this one all had C. Oops, I did my 
do that. I'll hit C. Um, and then this bird and this one is connected by position 16, A at position 16. So I'm just, I don't, again, I don't want to do this for you. Maybe you want me to do it for you, but I'm not going to. So um, I'm just reading from my table and I'm putting the, the birds uh, according to their beak characteristics on uh, uh, in the tree. Okay, and then you can also click on that evolutionary part, recall that. Uh, sorry, the DNA, um, the nucleotides, the genetics, uh, just so you can see it here if you don't have it copied down, although you should have it copied down. Make sure you copy it down. Uh, they do warn you here that there is a position that's not a, um, part of this table, and you should recognize that as position 10. We actually, there is no data on the position 10 for these birds, so that is the one that, that you wouldn't be using. Okay, so that is for the um, uh, mission for saving Hawaii, Hawaiian, the birds, about the birds. And then there's cone rangers, which we're going back into um, physical characteristics. And same idea, but there's more trees that are involved with this. And when I did this, I set it up again as a table. I actually put these guys on my um, rows and I put characteristics across the columns and then I just check, 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 check. Okay. This one, because there were more to it, there's more species that um, it takes a little bit more time. So, but same idea, you're building that tree and um, you're, you're finding how, <clears throat> sorry, how these species are connected. You can work backwards. Uh, you can do things like, um, well, I know, I know they all, I mean, I can put them all up here. Uh, this is so wrong the way I'm doing this, but I have a hard time with this one, but I know they all have compound cones. So I know that one is correct. And then they start branching off. So the next one that's most complete is pollen without air sacs, pollen without air sacs. And the ones that are pollen without air sacs are um, this guy. So if I'm going to do this one as pollen without uh, air sacs, and I could leave this here, a coral reef is in there. Whoops, that's not what I wanted to do. So these two are pollen without uh, air sacs. Uh, the monkey puzzle tree is also, come on, get over here. Huh. I'm going to try that again. Didn't like that at all. Hmm. Norfolk Island Pine. A little bit glitchy, isn't it? Okay, I'll change that. So, A. Okay, coral reef pine. Uh, monkey puzzle tree. And Norfolk Island Pine. I just wasn't going down low enough. That was what my problem was. And the uh, there. I know that all of these guys are pollen without air sacs. I just read from my list. That's all I did. Pollen with air sacs. So I know that these two left um, are small fleshy cones. These two are small fleshy cones, which they got right there. Yep, see how I, so now I've made my, my separation and then I can further break these guys down into, let's say um, I'm looking at uh, smaller scaly leaves and that was the Norfolk Island Pine and the Coral Reef. So I know that those two are together and that that is um, 
smaller scaly leaves, right? I know that those two are smaller scaly leaves. I've still got to do, do a division here. And I know that um, the cone scales without wings right here is our monkey puzzle tree and piranha, the other pine, piranha pine. Just sounds weird to me. Monkey puzzle and piranha pine are cone scales without wings. Just let me double check that. And then our palm with air sacs. Let's see how that looks. You're gonna let me know if I have it right. Don't have it right. Um, pollen with air sacs. Large. And large blade leaves. Let's see if that works. So it's a very much a trial and error. So there, so there I have it, and it's on the right hand side, and then I have to answer that question. So that should help you with um, those two in the um, um, mission four, and then also we we have our third interactive that you need to do. I don't need to go through that one. It's pretty straightforward. Okay, that's it.